Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Shh. Everybody calm down. What a week it's been. For all of you parents whose kids went back to school or maybe you started homeschooling, uh, just know that we are all in this together and we want to hear from you. Send your pictures. I love, love, love our feeds being flooded uh, with back to school pictures or maybe pictures from you know your kid's bedroom. Uh, but this is an interesting time and I know it's been stressful, but um, we are here for you. So just know that. A couple housekeeping items. Uh, my makeup mirror broke this morning. So if anything is amiss, it just went bzz, bzz, and shorted out. So I can't see as y'all know. So if something is wrong, don't you worry. I'm heading to Bed Bath & Beyond with my 20% coupon this weekend. We're gonna fix this up. Second item, look what I found. Vintage Atlanta and Company mug. I've been doing this show for 11 years. This was, I think, the original logo when I started. And my friend Karen had it. I was helping her move. And Karen said, you have to have it for your living room. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be a great Friday. And we're off to the weekend, so that's going to be good. And uh, let's talk to uh, the fabulous, always beautiful, sweet as a Georgia peach on a hot summer day, Kara Kinnear. See, Kara, if you were here, you could tell me, oh my. lose the blush, pencil in the eyebrows. But I had to clarify some of those housekeeping items. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, no, you always look great. And it's a glorious Friday. And we're going to start the weekend off with a bang, ladies and gentlemen, because that's Woo! what we try to do here each and every day. Um, I can't wait do to it. watch this back to see how glorious you do indeed look. A little glowy J-Lo person you. All right, let's get started. Oh, uh, this first story me. is pretty cool, and I'm going to tell you why. All right, so Giselle was a hairstylist and a knitter, and when COVID hit, uh, went with it her businesses, okay? So with a lot of people, she was like, what do I do with uh, all my idle time? Hmm, I think I could probably hmm. try to make masks. A lot of people need masks. Frontline workers, there are friends that need masks, so what yeah. am I going to do? Well, I just happen to have this heirloom, a family heirloom for my great-great-grandmother. It's a 1922 red-eye 6'6 model Singer sewing machine. And um, she got it out of her closet what? and her husband said, well, that needs to be rehabbed a little. So he did just that by watching YouTube videos. They brought Aww. it back to life um, and had this beautiful sewing machine to use. And then Giselle thought, well, I don't know how to sew. So that's a little bit of a problem, but her husband, Darren, does know how to sew because his grandmother taught him many years ago. So she uh, learned from her Come husband. On. They started making masks. This business was born. They now sew 30 masks a day. They have sent over 500 masks around the country and around the world to help those who need masks. Um, awesome. She thought, you know, what a beautiful thing that we are able to do, not only together, but to incorporate the memories of our great-great-grandmother, our great-grandmother, our grandmothers yes. that gifted us this beautiful heirloom. And then, of course, obviously taught us the skill of sewing. So um, helping others in need, but also a she little does. bit of a deeper meaning as well. And how, how beautiful is that sewing machine? Yeah. My goodness. My God, so nostalgic. Uh, my, our cousins that lived on the next block, um, our mo her mom, Sandra, um, sewed and taught us. Now, I, of course, I'm a little rusty, but I would love to do it. And I mean, just again, just thinking about the significance of the sewing machine, but also helping out in th these you know, times is just pretty incredible. That's so awesome. And I mean, as yeah. a couple, doing it together. I love it. It's a great, great yeah. thing. I love that a lot of people are are not just sitting at home with all of their time watching lots and lots of television. I'm just kidding. I wish I could watch television. I have too many children. Netflix, but yeah. that people are wondering what they can do. do with their time <laughs> to help others. It's just fantastic. And that's why we do this segment right. each and every day to highlight those people. And some other people we want to highlight so are true. some amazing kids. We try to talk about kids doing great things every day and there is an abundance of them doing just that. So this is about Brock and Emma. Brock and Emma are seven and nine years old and they wanted to do an, a lemonade stand. And their mother said, 
You can do a lemonade stand eventually, but we need to have a little bit of thought put into this. So she was kind of waiting. And then one day yeah. after they watched the news, they said, how about we do a lemonade stand and we donate all the proceeds to the local hospital workers and buy them snacks. I love yes. that they thought of snacks for the workers. So that's what they did. They raced $100 yes. in seven hours. Uh, the neighborhood kind of caught on to what, what they were doing and were Venmoing money and stopping by and just donating, I know, to give um, to the kids. And then the sweetest part is they got the snacks, they hand delivered them to the hospital. And an RN that worked at the hospital just said that the fact that they delivered them to brighten their day was really the magic of it all because it was just fun to have a visitor and to get snacks. Yeah. Everybody loves snacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I mean, lunches and dinners are cool, but we all know those snacks give us energy throughout the day. How thoughtful. $400. That's a lot. Okay, Haley says time for one <laughs> more, too. I know. Okay, we want to do this one really quickly because it's so important. It's in our backyard. The varsity established in 1928 had to eliminate car hop service um, due to COVID for a while. And with it went one of the most glorious varsity workers, if I can say so mm -hmm. myself. Um, Lewis Frank Jones yep. is 89 years old. He worked at the varsity for 63 years as the number one car hop. He hung up his uniform in March. He was telling the food and dining editor of AJC that, um, you know, he remembers when he would sell two hot dogs, a Coke and fries for a quarter. That was a long time ago. And he has many memories and had yeah. uh, just the best time working there for all the years that he did. But congratulations to you, sir. What a fine looking gentleman yes, you are. Enjoy your retirement. Career. He has his feet up at home in College Park. Yes. Red, as they used to call him. Congratulations, Red. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that is so <laughs> incredible. Um, it just uh, uh, to think of all that time, the rich history of an Atlanta landmark. So, yes, that is so cool. Uh, Kara, thank mm -hmm. you so much, my dear. Have the best Great. weekend. I know we'll be chatting. Mm -hmm. And guys, if you have a fun or interesting It's All Good story, send it to us. It's facebook.com slash ATL and co or tweet us using that hashtag. It's all good. It certainly is.